All right, folks, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. This should be the Tools for Decision Support 2 session. And uh, I see nobody standing up to run out, so you're in the right place. Um, our first talk, I'll just go ahead and introduce uh, Nicole. Hi, everybody. Um, today I'm going to present to you integrating environmental cost assessments. We're data-driven decision-making, um, and it's a case study on a roof retrofit. Uh, so we got to work with Bayer Material Science on this project. System motivation, I'm sure many of you have seen these statistics before, but um, you know, the building industry has a large impact here in the U.S. 20% uh, of the U.S. GDP, 40% of total energy consumption, and people spend a lot of time indoors. And because of that, we've um, seen a lot of new innovations with energy efficiency, um, product development um, in the building industry space. And most of it goes towards new construction. But when we take a look at what's out there in the building stock, um, specifically in the Northeast region, about 85% of buildings were built prior to 1990. And for those of you that know about buildings, you know that the structure has a longer lifespan than the products inside of it or the systems. So, you know, there's a lot of retrofits and renovations going on with these um, buildings. So here's an example of a retrofitted building, um, the Urban Outfitters headquarters down in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. So uh, the project that I'm going to present to you um, was under the Energy Efficient Buildings Hub located in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. And the Philadelphia Navy Yard is really um, undergoing uh, a whole renaissance. There's a lot of buildings, um, companies coming down for their headquarters, which is great. There's a lot of uh, renovations going down there, too. And it's primarily because this Navy Yard is all under the historical uh, society. So we can't just tear down these buildings. We have to really um, retrofit them. So the uh, demonstration, demonstration site is Building 669. And it's about a quarter of a mile away from the EB hub, EEB hub headquarters. And again, uh, we worked with uh, their material science. And I want to say first that this is a spin-off of an original project that was focusing on Building 669 from a whole systems perspective. So that included HVAC, lighting, envelope, roof, um, for a whole building um, retrofit. But again, this is just specifically for the roof. So here is an overview of Building 669. Um, it's a maritime building and it has a unique uh, tenant relationship where um, uh, the PIDC owns all of the Philadelphia Navy Yard and they give out 11 year leases to these tenants. So the owner of this building or the tenant of this building, um, Roads Construction, they're the ones in charge of these renovations, even though they're in a lease. So that's also something to um, consider. And it's a nice long building. The first floor is primarily a workspace, again, maritime. They have a dry dock right next to it. And then the top floor is the part that we really wanted to focus on for that whole building um, renovation. And that's where all the office space is. So the goal of this study was really to include life cycle assessment and life cycle cost assessment um, and present that to the building owner. The whole building project, that initial one, was just strictly focused on energy efficient strategies. And coming from my background, I was like, well, what about the environmental impacts? What about the life cycle cost assessment? How can we elevate what we present to the building owner? So uh, from that initial uh, project, we narrowed down to two different roof scenarios, a black EPDM and a white PVC. The owner wanted two different options, one that would have a reflective roof and one that had the capacity to hold PV panels later down the road. And you can see they're very similar. Um, the only um, difference was really the membrane at the top and then um, the separator sheet for the black EPDM. And you can see from these photos here, they really needed a new roof. And that's why I focused on it, because out of all the systems in this building, the roof was in dire need. Um, so I um, conducted an LCA and LCCA of these two different roof systems. 
and that included the product use and maintenance throughout the lifespan, and we used um, a 20-year lifespan for the group. So for the life cycle assessment, I used Athena, and we had a discussion yesterday um, about uh, Athena and its um, extensive use for the building industry, and primarily uh, we modeled the polyisoverged board from Bayer Material Science, which is actually used in Athena. So that was one of the reasons why um, I was really attracted to Athena. But then again, one of the limitations of Athena, you can't go in and modify the different layers. So based on our schematic, um, I applied a factor depending on what our description was versus the Athena unit process. For the life cycle cost assessment, um, we were able to get industry data and we did a traditional um, net present value, 3% uh, uh, inflation rate, and we did it throughout both of the systems as well as um, removal of the building energy costs. And we also included a maintenance plan, which we found to be the biggest um, factor of our cost assessment. And there was a 15-year roof study out there, um, the reference at the end, that if you have a proactive maintenance plan for a roof, which kind of makes sense, you know, you check roof, the roof um, quarterly, you have um, or an after major weather events, versus if you just kind of check the roof, there's a leak. You're going to see a difference. Um, so um, my colleague did uh, an ener energy um, model of the building using eQuest, and I utilized that data for the LCA and the LCCA, and what she found was that the savings compared to the base model um, were very similar depending on the two roof systems, and this is keeping everything as is and just changing the roof. Um, so, for the LCA results, you can see that this is just the product, this does not include the energy consumption. So. You can see that the PVC membrane had the highest environmental impacts, and it's primarily due to um, the chlorine in the PVC. But at the end of the day, both of these membranes both require a lot of um, energy to produce. So that should always be considered. So when we look at it over the entire lifespan, or these, the 20 years, you can see that um, the heating and cooling would really dominate the um, environmental impacts of this building. Uh, so that was an important finding here. But you can still see that the PVC um, had greater environmental impacts. The lifecycle cost assessment results, you can see that when we had this uh, proactive maintenance plan, that we didn't need to replace it year 13. And that made a big difference in the entire cost. We kept the same energy use. Um, because it was 19% savings for both the white and the black membrane. And again, coming back to this maintenance plan being a significant um, part of the uh, cost improvement. So we got all these results, and we were super excited. Let's show the building owner who's a traditional building guy. He hasn't seen this. And what happened? Well, as I uh, mentioned earlier, we had that big project that included HVAC and envelope and lighting, and uh, he had sticker shock. He was really overwhelmed with everything that was presented to him. So my project, because it was kind of off to the side, was kind of lost in the weeds, unfortunately. But we were able to go back and have a conversation with him specifically about this. and. As it turns out, that um, for small to medium sized buildings, there's a rule of thumb that it's about $20 per, um, $20 per square foot of um, their loans for any retrofits or renovations, which is an important factor and something that I was not aware of prior to this study. But um, although it wasn't as influential as I had you know, initially hoped, we were able to get some really um, good lessons out of it. So, you know, in conclusion, the EPM roof was better than the white PVC. Um, so the energy consumption wasn't, didn't have that big of a difference. We did see it um, in the environmental impacts and in the life cycle cost. Uh, 
but for the building owner, you know, really understanding the budget requirements and and really understanding the client goals. So for this specific industry, this maritime industry, their biggest environmental um, goal is to adhere to air permits. So again, that's something that I was not aware of until after we came back to this conversation with him. And then it also makes more sense when the companies that are larger, they have more capital, they're more likely to invest in LCA and LCCA analyses prior to a retrofit. So there is still a lot of improvement for small to medium sized companies and how to get them aware of these environmental impacts of their um, building systems. So thank you. Um, in terms of the entire life cycle cost of the roof system, I didn't um, include the 11 year lease. That would be important if I was trying to present something that had a long ROI um, from their perspective. And that again comes back, it's a unique uh, relationship. So. I did not include it specifically in the LCCA, but it was definitely something to consider if I had this crazy technology that I wanted to present to him and they had a high ROI. Yeah? Because if you look at white PVC, is it, is it not much of an improvement on the white asphalt? Because white asphalt is, is, is just a bad solar absorber. It doesn't mean how much reflecting. I'm, I'm surprised. That yeah, I think because it was located in Philly, I I don't know why. Um, I guess it's a trend in the Northeast that the white PVC is about the same as the black roofs. Um, we did go into prior to the selecting those two roofs. We did have a big matrix about different. Um, white roofs and different black roofs, and that's what we came up with, those two. Um, but I'd be happy to look into my files for more information on that for you. Maybe I missed it, but what, uh, so ultimately they decided to go with the PVC roof? No, so the roof is still as it is right. in this decrepit, really sad roof stage. Um, the owner, as I said, he had Significant sticker shock, unfortunately. If maybe I had just um, shown in this presentation just the roof system, I think it would have been a much different story. But um, so he has not selected anything. But based on our recommendations, um, I think he would take. He has all this information. I think he would lean toward the black EPM roof. So um, independent of the life cycle costs, if you were just looking at the initial cost. Is there a big difference in the two? Uh, the PVC was about 7% higher in the initial cost. So both the initial cost and the life cycle cost would push them towards the black EPM. Yes. But the energy consumption, which we thought would have a bigger impact on the cost and the environmental impacts, were generally the same between the black and the white group. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you.